A recent question gave me the idea for this video. The author wants a number of picture frames on an opening background, and within each of the frames is a short video. If we're going to use a standard oblong frame, something like this, then the masks are not required to do this. But if the frame is a different shape, maybe an oval or a round frame, then we do need a mask because we need to hide any of the video outside of the frame. Within the slide list of PTE AV Studio, I'm going to drag down this sky as my background and I'm going to increase the slide duration to about 20 seconds so we've got time to work and I'm going to open that up into the Objects and Animations screen. Down at the bottom right corner, I want to click in this no man's land here because I want to remove the selection on the background sky and remove this yellow green outline. Now we can right click and I need to add a control frame. Now at some stage we may be making four of these, so it may make sense here to rename this frame so we can identify it amongst the other three, which we'll add a bit later. To do that, into the properties, and I'm going to use a shortcut here, TL, which is going to represent top left. Now with the frame selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to add my video. I'll just select the first one. Straight back to the frame, select it again, right click. This time I'm going to add an image, but the image is going to be the frame. I'm going to use this one called Brass Thin. It's a PNG file, so the center of the frame, as you can see, allows the video or image to show through. If we'd like to give a little bit of depth to the frame here, we can go to the drop shadow box, and if you want to change the settings, you'll find them in the Customize menu. But I can close up that frame, which is now controlling all three parts, and we're done. But let's assume we want to have four frames on the screen. Well, we're going to use the frame here to resize both the video and the frame all in one go. Now, to do that, we need the Animation tab, top right, I'm going to drop my zoom down to around about 44. This is variable depending on what you're creating. But then using the pan X and the pan Y, I need to bring my image to the left and raise it up. Now we're going to need something like minus 47, minus 48. Again, this isn't critical. You may find the one image may need 48, one may need 47, just to get them positioned nicely on the screen, but we'll choose 47. So once I've got the top left situated, then if I select my frame, right click, copy, click to remove all selections, and then right click and paste, now I can create my top right. Makes sense to drop down to this one, I think, Go back to the properties, make this one TR for short. But then all I've got to do now is to move it to the right back into the animation tab. So all I've got to do now is click and drag. And we know the value is 47, so to get it correct, I'll type it. And here we're correct at minus 47. We can see that by what we can see on screen. Now, all we need to do is to swap over the videos, and that's pretty quick and easy, because if we just open up our frame, select the video, properties, picture, I can select the next video in the set. So all I've got to do is to repeat that two more times and position the other two frames and then change the videos. So copy and paste does the heavy lifting for us here. We only need to create one frame video, reduce the size of it, place the frame in its contents where we need it to be, and then replace the video. Now as we view full screen what we've just created in around five minutes, 
One issue we need to consider is to make sure that all four videos are of sufficient length so that they all remain running for the slide duration we need. You can have as many videos playing as you want. Click the link below to download a few of my PNG frames, including the one that we used here. Incidentally, I've been using PTE AV Studio 11 for this demonstration. I'll see you next time.